Hey everybody, how you doing? Tom Willard here with this technical analysis course series. I'm going to do part one today. I'm going to discuss breakouts flags. So what I'm going to do is do a series of, of um, uh, course videos here that are going to be pretty short, sweet, to the point. I don't like to waste time. Okay, we'll get right to the meat of the matter. I'm going to show you the patterns um, and, and, and basically teach you a lot of this technical analysis um, chart setups. And so we'll do it in segments, so I'll try to keep the videos short and sweet. The first one we're going to talk about today is breakouts and flags, um, so or breakdowns, of course. This is um, data from today. And again, you know, I'm showing the dates on here and the symbols, and the thing is with technical analysis, it, it doesn't matter about the dates. I mean, this is actually when it happens. I, you know, some people hide these dates, and I figure there's no point because they may think it's obsolete two, three years from now. Someone's watching this video, say, oh, well, this is obsolete. It's from October of 2014, um, and that is not necessarily the case with regards to technical analysis. Now, um, my philosophy on this is um, uh, quite um, – um, detailed and I'm not going to cover it. I'm going to cover it throughout the series. We'll talk about it. I'll talk to you some psychological pieces later on probably. But right now let's just focus on the the objective patterns. Okay. First up we got a breakdown here on on data. Now when you're looking for a breakout or breakdown, what you're looking for is a base. And typically how I define a base is you want at least three bars, two to three bars in consolidation, that means bars that are right next to each other. So you see my pointer here, where this stock came down pretty um, fast through the morning, popped up, and then it kind of consolidated and drifted lower, drifted lower, and then it came down, broke the lower area here, and then based, right? You had a number of candles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five-minute candles, this is a five-minute chart, where it based into the declining moving average here. Okay. Now, it had the support point here, but it was what I call a V bottom where it, it didn't spend a lot of time down here. It came down here, hung out for about 50 minutes, and popped back up. Okay, So the ability for this to, especially in a weak market like there was today, to break through that point is um, is uh, it's a D, you got a good shot at doing it. Okay, Tight base. So the way to play this is you short the low of the base. So the low of the base here at this point is around 69.69. So you can short it here at 69.68 to 65. And put your stop right above the high of the base, around 92. Okay. Now, setting targets and the rest of that stuff I'll talk about in a later video. And you can see that this one really, with the market weakness, worked out really well. It ran down here pretty, quite considerably um, throughout the rest of the day. So that's a really nice example of a breakdown. Now, again, there's a number of other patterns here uh, that I'm seeing, but we won't discuss those. I'll discuss those in a later um, video. Now, on, on the converse side, on the long side, Stryker today was, was a stronger stock, okay? And it's also providing a base. So, again, you see a, a series of candles next to each other, okay, just going sideways. Now, ideally, you want to see lower volume in the, can, in the base, okay? Um, but you're, it's the same concept. If you're buying a base, you want to buy the high of the base, and you typically put your stop below the low of the base. Now, some people give them cushion. Depending on the stock, I'll give it a couple extra pennies. You know, this is, of course, day trading, but this applies to swing trading as well. Um, pick a couple of, so the low here is 8089, you may want to pick 8088, or you may want to go 8084, okay? But you've always got to be taking into account reward to risk, okay? What your potential targets are before you even take a trade, okay? So you've got to work that cushion in if you're going to do it. And your purchase point above the base is right now around 8110 or so, right? Now, notice how it kind of tightens. In a sense, this is kind of like a larger flag where you've got higher lows and lower highs. Okay, now watch it. It gets tight, and look how tight it is in here, okay? Volume starts picking up here around 130. It's holding the area. Right now, I'm thinking, okay, I could buy this thing probably over 8105. I don't need to wait for 8110, but it carries more risk with it if you do that, meaning that um, it hasn't breached the absolute high of this consolidation area. There's a, there's a, there's a little bit higher chance, okay, that it, it won't be able to breach that point. Okay, so if you're front running it, in a sense, is what I call it. Um, but when it bases this long, to me, it's worth the risk, especially if you got a decent target to pay off in respect to the stop. Okay, so you see it sits here a little bit longer, and then boom, she's gone, and she runs right up to where my first target would be, where this pivot high is here, and it's around 8150 area. Okay, so a very nice run and a very good example of a basing breakout there. Okay, so breakouts, you saw a breakdown, and you see a breakout here on these two examples. Okay. So let's move to the next example. Now this is IPG from a couple days ago. You'll see here that it's a little bit thinner, but it pops up here, and you can see bases don't have to be as long um, 
some are some some have a lot more bars, some have a lot more candles, some have this one's only got three or four. And it, it actually is a flag. You can see the little the, the flag pole, and you can see the little flag here. Okay, it's a flag set up here near the high. Now you'll notice here, even on this five, here's a nice base here, right? You've got a higher low, came down, made a low, made a higher low, based out. Okay, nice one here. This one doesn't move much. Okay, um, but of course your stops aren't that large either. Again, it all comes down to reward risk. Okay, it doesn't matter about making a dime or 20 cents, or it, it matters what, what you're risking to make that amount of money, whatever it is. Okay, and you see a nice move here. So there's the flag set up here on IPG. Okay, and you can see that thing. Um, it sets up so look, it can be shorter. They don't have to be as long. Notice the volume pick up here. Once it starts going, you get that fuel uh, and you can get that good run uh, towards your target. Now this one here is a little different. I want to show it because I want to really bring into the kind of, of volume. This is Twitter from a few days ago. Now you notice it came down hard. It kind of grinded around here. And it came down. Look at the, the really hard moves down and the volume spikes here. And the higher low. Big volume spike, retrace, big volume strike. Uh, uh, um, spike, not strike, spike, and it made a higher low. What does happen the next day? Well, it gaps up. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. You got a lot of volume down here. Okay. Now, again, it's buyers and sellers. You don't have a print without a buyer and a seller. Okay. So you can't say it's selling volume because there's buyers for every one. Um, but either way, there were more sellers than buyers because price ended up lower. Okay. From at least this original area here. Uh, otherwise, you know, prices don't only move when there's an imbalance of supply and demand. So you get a gap up here, and let's watch this flag set up. Look at this thing. Holds. Look at that. Now, in this case, you know, you're using the gap as your flagpole, but look at this little symmetry here. Now, the problem with this trade, again, I'll talk about targets later, is, is my initial target would be around the 40 area. Therefore, I'm looking at a reward or risk on this thing around 2 to 1, which isn't great. I typically want about 3. Uh, but if I get something where I've got volume like this getting kicked down here like this and it pops up, um, I may just jive in. I'll take a two to one reward risk shot uh, on something like this where there's potential. Plus, you've got the, the gap up here that could drive um, short covering. Okay, and it just demand. So you can see this flag set up here beautifully. Okay, you're buying right here at about 52. You get about a 20 cent stop, and again, a 20, a 40 cent target. So you're only two to one. Not great. Okay, but it's a V top. There's a good chance that if it breaches it, it could run some more, and you can see the potent run here. Okay, and then it kind of tops out. All right. So another example of a flag, just kind of variation there with the flush out toward the end of the previous day. And my final example for this this um, lesson is this uh, riverbed. Notice how it came down here. Volume spike. Okay, came down, popped up above this area, pulled back here. Volume spike. Volume spike. No reaction. Right. Um, no ability to go lower. In a sense, you've got a kind of like a mid-level base of this move up. It's actually a lower. It's, this is actually qualifies as, as something that's called, a, some people call a phoenix, where you're rising from the ashes, where it's coming down and get crushed early, balances out, and then pops. Okay, so this thing breaks out here. And then you get a nice, so basically you got a breakout entry here. Okay, and then you've got a little uh, uh, minor pivot, little pullback here, kind of a slingshot. Okay, it can be also construed as a little bit of a flag here up to the target area. Okay, so another couple examples of, of a, a breakout type flag. So breakouts are pretty easy to see. A lot of people see them. Now I'm going to do a segment on uh, uh, failed patterns at some point too, where um, you know these patterns will fail, and if you buy them when you're looking at different aspects of multiple time frame analysis and such, um, you can find low odds breakout setups that you can go short. So you're actually you're actually um, looking to short uh, something that's that uh, a novice may be looking to go long on. Okay, and taking advantage of that. Um, a lot of games being played. So a lot to discuss here. But I wanted to start with this lesson. I thought it was a good one. Everyone knows, or a lot of people have heard about breakouts and breakdowns. And so here's my take on the breakouts and breakdowns and some examples of recent past. And again, they apply. They'll apply two years from now. The bases, the patterns are the same. Um, it's just a matter of what environment those patterns you know, uh, arrive in with regards to the, 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 the market sentiment, um, where the markets come from. Okay, up to that point, where the stocks come from, um, and tying into all these different variables to figure out where your edge is and then taking advantage of it. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to talking to you in the next part of the TA course series.